Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. It's Monday night and this garden vlog is all about burnout. I get that question a lot is how do you keep up the garden? Do you ever get tired? Do you get burned out? Absolutely 100% I get burned out usually between July 15 and August 15th and what I try and do is break the garden down into small projects get them done and I'm going to show you through this video everything I did over the weekend, about six hours on Sunday, a couple hours on Saturday to get it into the shape. Nobody likes weeding. And again, if you're suffering from garden burnout, the best thing to do, take a deep breath, pick small spaces. This whole area looked like that. So I've cleaned up this area and just break it down into pieces. And the way I weed, I mean, I know this isn't earth shattering, but rather than kind of starting here and always looking forward and seeing everything you have to do, I start backwards, start in a corner. And as you work your way back, you're throwing your weeds down. And basically, you're just seeing what you've accomplished. And that's a little bit more motivating, I think, than just starting here and then you keep moving and moving and moving to where there's more grass. So it's 10.35 a.m., about two hours worth of work. If you put your weeds into a black plastic bag, let them sit in the sun for three to five days, it'll heat up, it'll kill off any viable seed that's in there, and you can dump it into your compost bin. And it is going to smell a little bit sitting in the black plastic, but it's better than putting seed from weeds into your compost. And if you're not hot composting, you really have to do that. All right, so I've taken the now garden I back. walk in, I see this open space. I don't have that heavy feeling over me that I have to do a thousand things and it's really rewarding to come back into the garden. I'm just going to walk around with you. What I'm doing is I'm transitioning it over to fall planting. That's also motivating for me because I get to think about, all right, what am I going to set up? What am I going to get planted? And that kind of gives me that burst of energy that I need. And just get it ready for the fall. Open space. Just clear out what, what's problematic. Things look really healthy in many places. Other places coming up here, to the melons they're all beat up and I didn't really do a video on this because I wanted to grow them this year vertically get the experience and then I'll come back next year and I'll talk about it but you can use ag fabric to make slings they grew nicely vertically took up the space well lots of melons I got more plants down there there's a really big melon on the other side this is a lifesaver a telescope telescoping telescoping legs but it's a nice sprinkler and really realistically even though I like to hand water I'm gonna to have to probably use this again that same time period late July early August because it's just way too hot here it's been over 90 for over two weeks so I'm gonna clear out all the melons take out the cantaloupe there are nice sized cantaloupes in there that was a success I'll do more about that next year so I encourage you you're getting a little tired out, a little burned out, just get in, clean everything out. A couple hours later, cleaning up this area, keeping the motivation going with taking time to kind of look at what I've accomplished. So these have all been tied back, leaves are moved in the bottom, not too exciting. Took out all the winter squash in here, butternut, acorn, all the melons, all the cantaloupe, wide open starting to take care of these eggplants they'll get a nice feeding get them going removed one of the zucchini plants that was that was uh in there planted another one right back there that one's still doing well moved the trellises that were behind me with the cantaloupe the second wave of cucumbers going up there these continue to do extremely well cleared out some tomatoes that were back there all this open space Everything's been cleared out. And this is everything I harvested out of there. So this will get me motivated to start working my way over to the right side. So lessons learned this far through the year, August 3rd. Love this section of the garden. These containers don't have any bottoms. They're designed for raised beds, but everything's growing really well. This is all mulch in here that I Helped along to be viable for all these plants by putting in blood meal. Be doing a video on that again next year. This is a zucchini plant that was just in the video on how I was pruning them and taking care of them mid-season. It's doing extremely well. But this whole section is great. 
One mistake, so to speak, is I set up the tomato tower and it was a little bit too successful. I just don't need all those tomatoes with everything I'm growing. So next year, instead of just doing a pepper container and a tomato container, I'm going to combine both of them. But everything in this corner is doing extremely well. Love this side. This is the cherry tomato hedge. It's going to be out of control soon. So next year, I'm not going to do two hedges. You can see the other tomato hedge over there. I'm just going to pick one. So I'm starting to think about what I want to do next year. Cleaned up 80% of the garden, cut the grass back, picked out just about all the large tomatoes, tied stuff back. The sprays will go out probably tomorrow. I'm a little bit tired. Some dust where I need it. Left the cherry tomatoes on. Trellised up the cucumbers. I'll take care of the cherry tomatoes probably tomorrow. But everything is finally back in shape. When I come out here, I don't feel like I got a thousand things to do, only about a hundred now, so that's better. And then this is my harvest table, and I just want to show you how I set it up. As I'm going through the tomatoes, tomatoes to the right here have cracks or are soft, some sort of blemish. They're all going to be turned into sauce. I'll show you a quick version in this video how I do that. And then stuff that's going to be given away usually goes over to the left. I was able to eat some of the watermelon. Cantaloupe today was delicious. This is where I'm at now. Just got to do a little bit of dusting and some spraying. So just bring in the blemished tomatoes and I just throw them all into the sink. Rinse them as you go, cut off the blemishes and then we're going to chunk them and throw them in here. And Let me just show you one trick too. This will have to simmer down for about two hours but if you have eggplant or zucchini you can just take that chunk that up in there too and we're going to get a puree it down into a great sauce. So you just drop it right onto the heat. You don't need to add water or oil. Don't season it right now. One trick is, not really a trick, but it, it kind of makes sense. If you season this now when it has all the liquid in it and then it reduces down, it's going to be over concentrated probably with Onion, salt. garlic added to this one with the eggplant. And over here, it's going to be red peppers, tomatoes, and garlic. If you want to roast the red peppers, you can do that. But you can make all kinds of different sauces extremely easily. Boil it on low because it still can burn on the bottom. But once it starts to you know, simmer like this, turn it down onto the lowest setting, but you want to keep a rapid, boil, rapid boiling going. This can take you know, up to two hours. You want it to reduce by half, and then that's when we're going to use the submersion blender and pulverize everything in there. Again, no seasoning. And I like to start this early in the day, go out harvest the tomatoes first, and while I'm working on the garden, this is simmering down and it'll be ready for dinner that evening. So any hand blender or submersion blender works. So after about two hours, this one's still going, you want it to reduce down, you know, almost by half to two thirds before you drop the blender in. So this is nice and thick and we just puree it up. And just bear with me because I just want to show you how great it looks. Don't pull it out like that, you'll make a mess. So nice, thick sauce from all your tomatoes. That's perfect. And this is where you would drop in the salt now, the pepper now. You could put in garlic powder, oregano, basil. Always put your herbs in really in the last 15 minutes. You don't want them to heat up and have all the essential oils boil away or they get bitter. But this is why you don't season it till the end, because you're only seasoning this much. If we come over here, it's getting thicker, but I probably want this to reduce down maybe by another third. And then a lot of people ask me, what do I do with everything? Cherry tomatoes mixed with oil and salt and pepper. These are on the way to my wife's uh, co-workers. And then I still have all that to process and do something with. So things are really coming in. I recommend using this for your motivation. If you're getting a little bit burned out in a garden, take a look at what the garden's producing, take a look at what you're creating, and that should help you motivate you to take care of it through the rest of the season. Okra looks good. I'll come in in the morning before work, wash the dust off, dust on the outside of the leaves, take care of any problems. Crazy cucumber beetles going through here. Something was eating my ochre down. 
there's the dust. I use Captain Jack's and on the base, and I want people to be scared just because it's a human made chemical, the base of my zucchini plants, I use the seven dust to get rid of the vine borers. And for instance, even though I use it down on the stem, this one got a vine borer, I pulled it out with um, a paper clip and then I just put dirt over it. That will root out, it will save the zucchini plant. Let me show you, I mean you're going to see in the garden, um, in the videos that I cut in, but it was starting to look like this. You know, just getting overwhelmed, it's been so hot, it's kind of hard to work out here, but I've taken it back. I'll be planting my fall crops starting this week. They'll be going into spaces like this. I'll be direct sowing lettuces and radishes. I'll be starting beets and trays. If you want to follow along with me, go to my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. I'll be running different fall package deals. I'll put a link um, in this video. Oh, I even dropped in another zucchini plant. And you can see that one's doing well. I harvested a huge yellow one out of there. But you still have time. If you have 60 days before the frost come and you got transplants, you can drop them in. Sometimes it says, you know, 45 days to harvest, 60 days to harvest. When it's this hot, 93 degrees, lots of daylight, your plants are going to mature much more quickly than you can imagine. So it's going to be faster than that 45 days. So I'll consider this a close look at my red beefsteak entry. Probably 25 gorgeous tomatoes on there. More in there. All ready to come off. I think there are a couple more down there. At least 40 tomatoes on the plant. Going to take all these off, give them away and make sauce out of them. And we'll see if I can keep it going into mid-September and get more off of there. Anyway, I hope you take the time, get that weeding done, remove the plants that are beat up, and just slowly get your motivation back. Because we got a whole month of August, September, some zones we can go all the way into later October, we're gonna plant garlic. Thanks for watching. And again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be getting in the fall garden this week.